Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from across the world. Our headlines Death toll in Beirut blasts reaches 100 over 4,000 injured so far. Today marks a year of India stripping Jammu and Kashmir of its statehood and autonomy. Colombia's top court orders a house arrest of former President Alvaro Uribe. And COVID 19 deaths cross 700,000. Close to 250 deaths are reported every hour worldwide. We begin with the Beirut blast where at least 100 people are reported to have been killed and over 4,000 injured in the explosions that rocked Lebanon's capital on Tuesday afternoon. The country's Prime Minister Hassan Diab stated that the blasts were caused by more than 2,700 tons of ammonium nitrate that was stored in a warehouse in the area. The blast devastated the port, destroyed nearby buildings and caused significant damage to those further away. Reports have suggested that its impact was felt as far as the island of Cyprus. The city's airport, which is about 10 kilometers away, was among the buildings which suffered extensive damage. Reports say that the hospitals in the area have been flooded with the injured, with many running out of space to treat patients. Journalists on the ground also report that a few hospitals have been damaged, while authorities are working to find survivors in the blast zone. It is also reported that the blast destroyed silos that contained 85% of the country's grain and large amounts of medical supplies. The estimated damage amounts to up to 5 billion US dollars, and over 200,000 people in the city are expected to be rendered homeless. For a country that's reeling from a debt crisis, widespread unemployment and the fallouts of the COVID-19 pandemic, the blast will only add to its problems. We now go to Kashmir, where today marks the first anniversary of the abrogation of sections of Article 370 of the Indian Constitution. The erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir was stripped of both its statehood and its constitutionally guaranteed autonomy. The state was also bifurcated to form two centrally administered territories with no self-government. A very harsh communications lockdown was put in place and political leaders were arrested. In this feature video, we bring you some of the implications of the decision. On 5th of August 2019, the Government of India revoked Article 370 against the wishes of majority in Kashmir. As Indian Home Minister Amit Shah made the announcement in front of cheering Indian parliamentarians and a minuscule opposition, Kashmir Valley was put under an unprecedented siege to crush dissent. <laughs> I will say so much that I will use Kashmir as a word. Kashmir is a word that Protests were quelled and thousands were arrested. In just a day, BJP changed everything in Kashmir. You should Hassan, you should call on me, you should Hassan, you should bring it to BJP. You should bring it, sorry, BJP party, you should bring it to the party, you should bring it to the party, you should A year has passed since then, but Kashmir is caught in the moment. You know, to be very honestly, I think this year has been a catastrophe to all of us, at a personal level and political level also. People are in shock. The mainstream is completely uh, in disarray. And we are shocked to the extent that we, you see sadness all over Kashmir. There's no celebration. There's nothing happening actually. People are silent. And there's a constant state of mourning that people are yet to recover that this has happened to us. So there is huge anxiety. There is huge anger also and silence in Kashmir. Of course there is fear. Of course there is a lot of fear. The large scale detentions have contributed to fear and also to silence. People are scared to talk. Last time I spoke, I was detained for a, you know six months and then for six months I continue to be under house arrest. So I'm taking a huge risk when I'm talking to you. I don't know what is the ramification of talking in the Modi's new India, the model which he's talking about. A year has passed since the 70-year-old law was removed in Kashmir and the region was bifurcated into two union territories. Article 370 was considered to be central to Kashmir, a formerly princely state's accession to Indian Union in 1947, when a vast majority of Muslims joined the newly created Pakistan. 
The removal of Article 370 has been a rallying cry of the Hindu right-wing party BJP. So when it came to power for the second time in India, following the 2019 parliamentary elections, it laid its eyes on Kashmir, a prized territory in the Himalayas. To remove the law which was referred to as the tunnel between New Delhi and Srinagar, the government had to do something about the opposition in Kashmir. It did so by converting the entire region of Jammu and Kashmir into an open-air jail. All movement was restricted and communication lines were severed. On 5th August last year, without knowing what was about to happen, the people of Kashmir woke up in a severe clampdown. The government was about to make a big decision about the people of Kashmir, but none of them had any clue. As the decision was announced in New Delhi, a young 17-year-old boy, Oseb Altaf, was being murdered on the streets of Kashmir to maintain peace and calm. Kashmir was under siege, a strict lockdown was imposed. The media was not able to cover Oseb's death. Authorities later claimed Oseb was a protester. Government had come to pressure that this Goa is a war. This is a war of CRP and Jain police. But in Purthan, Korea. This is a war of SHO, DSP, SPO. This is a war of SHO. 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 जानस थाप कारण पाँच में दोगुमत आठ दोगुमत हम याल गए सकते हैं हाँ याल गए सकते हैं इस पर याल गोमत इस शिड में हम आवश्यक लगा इसे सराहना पाठ में पुनः आयेत कहीं क्या इस गॉड ने तीन साल गाना दबाव सोस पाठ लोय हास पाठ क्या है क्या सुखे रहता है सुविधा लाख कुड़ मौसम क्या है क्या करता है बात बात शायद ही एमजीएम दुनिया नाकल कोरम होते हैं रूसी पाक सांसद वैन्या के दिव्यासे कयामत किस सजा है दोनों के तेमिस प्रश्न ये मस मतलब जवान अवलाद गए नियम दुनिया नाकल का है ताबाल हम वो मतलब आगो कुछ पे मान गए दो आठ कर किए कहे ब्यागो कुछ पे ब्यार ही मिसान कोरो के मौजूदी मतलब बाइचा सोचते हैं गर गन लुटा दयारे हुस्न में वफा जदों का काफिला मजार है किधर किधर गिरा कहाँ कहाँ लहो गिरा है जिस भी खाक पे कयामतें उठाएगा ये सुर्ख सुर्ख गर्म गर्म ताज़ा नौजवान लहो गवाह खुद जमाना है किताब पाक है दलील बराह हक बहे अगर न जाए राय गां लहो मैं आज इतना कहूँगा कि मैं आज लफ्ज़ कश्मीर इस्तेमाल करने से डरता हूँ क्योंकि जब कश्मीर कहीं नहीं है तो लफ्ज किस काम का रसवाई तो हमें अजल से ही मिली है जब से हमने जन्म लिया है तब से तो कश्मीर को रसवाई होते हुए देखा है कभी तो ऐसा नहीं देखा हमने कि नहीं भाई कुछ किया है कश्मीर के लिए किसी ने सारे लोग बस ऐसे ही हमारा दिल बहलाने के लिए सारी चीजें बोलते हैं बाकी कुछ भी नहीं टू डेज आफ्टर दब्रोगेशन ऑफ आर्टिकल थ्री सेवेंटी ऑन सेवेंथ ऑगस्ट टू थाउजेंड एंड नाइनटीन कलम खोने दिल मैं तुबो कर लिखूंगा वो दम गुट के मरना हमारी वो आहें वो सारे जनाजे वो लाशों के अंबार मैं मौजू बनाकर ये सब कुछ लिखूंगा मैं आवाज बनकर सबों की लिखूंगा वो जानू का जिसने भी सौदा किया है मैं उन दुश्मनों को जगाने की खातिर मैं मुर्दा दिलों को उठाने की खातिर कलम खोने दिल में डुबो कर लिखूंगा मैं सब कुछ लिखूंगा मैं सब कुछ लिखूंगा द पोइट्री ऑफ यंग मैन इन कश्मीर इज स्मियर्ड इन ब्लड वायलेंस एंड वॉर अ यंग पोएट फ्रॉम पुलवामा शाबाज राइट्स ऑफन ऑन दीज लाइंस ही फील्स कंपेल्ड टू राइट अबाउट पेन द लॉस एंड डेथ ड्यू टू द ऑनगोइंग सिचुएशन इन कश्मीर जिस चीज ने मुझे ये सब लिखने पे मजबूर किया वो था कि एक करीबी दोस्त था जिसने 
दम तोड़ दिया मेरे ऐसे यहाँ पे दम तोड़ दिया उसने एक एनकाउंटर में उसको गोली लगी थी तो फिर चंद घंटे वो जी पाया तो बस हाँ सिविलियन था वो छोटा था टेंथ क्लास में पर तब पढ़ रहा था वो तो वो था जिंदगी का एक एपिसोड जो मैं कभी नहीं भूल सकता पर्सनल लेवल पे मैं इतना कहूँगा कि मैं पे वो कलमस हट चढ़ गया एक किस्म तो क्योंकि हालात ही वैसे हैं देखें सच बात बोलेगा सच बात कोई बताएगा तो दूसरे दिन शायद वो ऐसा मैं कहूँगा कि सफाई करदास पे उसका कहीं नाम नहीं होगा सफाई हस्ती पर से उसका नाम मिट गया होगा तो अब इसमें कौन शामिल है कौन नहीं है मैं तो वो बात छेड़ना ही नहीं चाहूँगा ना तो मैं एज ए शायर ये बात कहूँगा कि हमारे लिए अगर हम शायरी लिखते हैं शायरी करते हैं तो हमारे लिए भी मोहाल है बागों में फूल सारे खिलने से रह गए हैं अरमान फसले गुल के मौजू में बह गए हैं लाशें निकल रही हैं वो देख हर मका से अब तो लहू की बारिश होती है आसमां से अहले नजर ने लोगो जन्नत जिसे कहा है अहले नजर ने लोगो जन्नत जिसे कहा है अफसोस वो हमारा कश्मीर जल रहा है अफसोस वो हमारा कश्मीर जल रहा है The August 2019 lockdown plunged the state into a sharp downward spiral. By the end of December 2019, the economy of the valley was in dire straits. The economic losses reported by traders and rights groups crossed over 40,000 crores or 5.4 billion dollars. पांच अगस्त ब्रोट पी जिंदगी ठीक पाठ गुजारान असल पाठ पुन अल पकान पे गरिक बच्चे पकन पोर वन बिहन लस बस सो कहस दिक्कत इस हज तक बनान या बिस्तर हवान तन बल तो बन मान स पुन कम दो पुन रोजगार मे पान को नचो मान स मजबूर परेशान गा कहन यो पांच दफा त्रे सत तुल पांच अगस्त पे वन हा तुल तो वन तुल तो वह कह तो तन आई सैनस घर मन सखत गरीबी तन अच्छा बे जन वोल कह मान अच्छे तकलीफ अच्छन हूँ अस मान स मत हथ कगर ये पांच अगस्त वो तन रूद मत हथ स मत हथ क्या वो घर बिहत स मान वो फाक तो हाँ लगे अस मज नहीं बिल्कुल अस नश पान तह तकरीब वन बिफोर द लॉकडाउन ऑफ फिफ्थ ऑगस्ट टू थाउजेंड एंड नाइनटीन the two brothers sustained their families on their own their lives have been deeply impacted since pakan yani yat mein ya halat ke kharab 5 august pe the gayi isa halat isa ke halat mein asni se us ki us go maklan acha na kaat gar ke hisab mein kya nan chalan तो वो फजल खुद हस पे पकान वनकस अच्छे बिस्तर मज व लार त्रा असान अत नार अस ना न सख तो न कहीं वनक तक बनान या बिस्तर हवान तो कान तो बनान तो कह वन तो पुन मानत तु पुन मान सास वो न पकान जो हथ स हथ पुन रोजगार उस पकान पानी बच्चे ऐसे हकान पाल अच्छे वनकस कहीं तन पे आए तम तश्किल वा कम फाक त लागन अस पे बराबरी चलान ब्लाइंड गोहताज कम सात ये कम रूज अम चीज हम मोहताजी गु कर पान अंदाज कूत नुकसान गो ये गई हालत वन वन अल्लाह तल दिन नजात वन हाँ वह मुश्किल गिर नस महत हाँ खुदकशी हिंद हालत तसित क्या ना घर मज कहीं बचन मज चोट अमस मोल कहीं ये पे हालत या हे कि बचे क्या फेल कर मोल पानस बचे बदल कह फेल हालत गई 
What compounded the situation for people in Kashmir was another lockdown imposed right when 5th August lockdown was beginning to ease. The outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic further pushed the people in the region towards the wall. In March, the government released two former chief ministers of Jammu and Kashmir, Farooq Abdullah and his son Omar Abdullah. But both did not talk about politics. They refused to talk about Article 370 until the rest of the political leaders were released from detention or the pandemic was over. On July 31st, authorities again booked former Chief Minister Mehbooba Mufti of the PDP, that is People's Democratic Party under Public Safety Act or PSA, continuing its onslaught on the mainstream politicians of the valley. For the mainstream politicians, such crackdown was something which was totally unexpected, especially after they advocated Indian rule in Kashmir for decades to people who have been opposing it. The anger is so much that you actually feel it is difficult to get dignity in the democratic process which we used to advocate at a point. And this is not happening because democracy has failed. This is because the pattern which is the Indian democracy is being confined and put in a position where Muslims are rendered irrelevant. Muslims are rendered stateless in their own country. We, we have done a huge disservice to ourselves when we did not at the right time raise it such issues. You know, we could have anticipated we were part of a mainstream or if we felt that this is not changing, we should have definitely introspected. And, uh, but again, you know, I say that, you know, in a democratic setup, it's numbers which matters. We tried to experiment with the numbers and we tried not to become part of hate politics. Punjab mein aap baat karte ho, Haryana mein, Maharashtra mein aapne baat ki, 370 ki 35A ki constitution of Jammu Kashmir scrap kiya. Har Kashmir ka mudda election mein har jaga Hindustan mein istimal hota hai. Lekin except Kashmiri, har banda is vee siyasat karega. Masla hamara, mudda hamara. Lekin hume bolte aap khamosh, tamashgir banye, aap baat nahi kar sakte ho. Lekin Hindustan ke har election mein Kashmir pe baat hogi. Hum detention mein the, and we saw how BJP, Congress, all parties, Maharashtra mein har gaon mein bolte the masle Kashmir par 370 pe 37 uh, 370 pe Ma Haryana mein baat hui Uttarakhand mein Uttarakhand mein they try to sell this people were not relating to those issues because it's a totally different issue but my point is ki agar aap apna muh band nahi kar sakte to hamara kyun band kar rahe ho agar aap ye is pe baat kar sakte to hum kyun na kare to this is happening that you know in a democratic country where everything to every dissent Democracy was a solution. That's what we thought always. The violence in Kashmir has not ebbed. The war has not ended. In the first six months of year 2020, over 120 militants have been killed in operations across Kashmir region, a majority of them locals from South Kashmir. There have been over a dozen civilian killings and major militant attacks against security forces. For people here, the situation has only worsened. The war in Kashmir continues, leaving scores dead, properties destroyed and the livelihood spoiled. Those who survive are left with perpetual heartache, dealing with the unbearable losses. When August you are pushing people to violence. Then you say, these people are crazy. Here, people are crazy. You have kept them in a year for one year in the house. Jail ki tarah bana diya hai, security ties kar diya, har opinion ko thought policing ho diya, koi tweet karta hai, Facebook pe bula lete hai. One segment of society is allowed to abuse Kashmiris, abuse Muslims. One segment of people is criminalized if they show the dissent. I'm not defending ki agar koi anti-state bolta hai, lekin the point is you have, your definitions have to be equal. Jo bachpan, jo hai, jo hum se kho, kho gaya, wo bachpan mein wapas chaunga. Us bachpan ko mein puru sukoon tarike se guzarna chaunga. And in encounters के बगैर या जो सारे जो सारे हम 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 पे ये जुल्म डाया गया हम कहेंगे कि एक तरह का जुल्म ही है जो हमारे बचपन बितारी हुआ जिससे हमारा बचपन खो गया तो वो सारी चीजें वापस जाऊँगा
We now go to Colombia where the country's Supreme Court on Tuesday ordered the detention of former President Alvaro Uribe Velez in a case related to witness manipulation and fraud. Uribe will remain under house arrest for the remainder of the judicial process. Uribe has currently over 270 cases against him including that of corruption, bribery, human rights violations, drug trafficking, money laundering and other grave offences. He has enjoyed complete immunity from any punishment so far. His right-wing rule in the country was marked by massive human rights violation and terror. Uribe's detention is a form of preventive custody to ensure that a suspect does not escape or tamper with evidence. Suspects are also put in preventive custody when they are considered a danger to society. Uribe's defence team said that it would appeal the order. Hours after this decision, President Ivan Duque came out in defence of Uribe, posting a video on Twitter condemning the court's decision. Duque is a member of Uribe's Democratic Centre Party and was groomed by Uribe himself to be the candidate of the right-wing coalition in the 2018 elections. Social movements, on the other hand, have hailed the decision of the court. They held protests, demanding that the due process of the lobby followed in his case and against the impunity Uribe has enjoyed all these years. In 2018, Colombia's Supreme Court launched an investigation into the former president for his alleged illegal interference in another probe initiated by left-wing senator Ivan Cepeda in 2012. Cepeda announced, uh, accused Uribe of having links to right-wing paramilitaries in the country. He specifically accused Uribe and his brother Santiago of forming the Metro Bloc of the United Self-Defense Forces of Colombia. That's the AUC. That's a paramilitary group in the country. Our next story is an update on the COVID-19 pandemic. The global fatalities have crossed 700,000 as of today. The number of reported infections stands at around 18.7 million and close to 12 million have recovered so far. The United States leads the fatality count with over 160,000 deaths. This is followed by Brazil with 96,000, Mexico with 48,000, the United Kingdom with 46,000 and then India with nearly 40,000 deaths. Close to 6,000 people are dying of COVID-19 related complications on an average day. This translates to nearly 250 deaths an hour. The number of fatalities is expected to rise as levels of infection in many countries are seeing a sudden hike. This is because of the outbreak slowly spreading to rural parts of poorer countries where public health infrastructure will not be in position to deal with it. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with major news developments from across the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah, cantar, que vamos a triunfar.